People often think that bleeding from a simple cut can be hard to stop in those with haemophilia. But in fact, the real problem that they face is bleeding inside joints or muscles. People with haemophilia lack one of the special messengers in the blood, called factors, that tell the blood to clot and stop the bleeding. Giving an injection of the factor that the person is missing will control bleeds, but any bleeding into the joints can cause long-term damage and lead to constant pain and disability in later life. To prevent joint bleeding and reduce the risk of joint damage, people with haemophilia can have prophylaxis, which means a treatment that prevents something happening, in this case bleeding. For people with haemophilia, prophylaxis involves regular injections of replacement factor, usually two or three times a week, or a single injection of factor before a specific activity like football. If people with haemophilia take prophylaxis, the reduction in joint bleeding can mean fewer days off school, less time in hospital, and less need for joint operations when they get older. Prophylaxis can reduce the chance of a joint bleed happening, but sometimes they still do occur. It's essential for people with haemophilia, whether receiving prophylaxis or not, to be able to recognise when a bleed is happening, so that treatment can be given as soon as possible to minimise any effects on the joint. To stay fit and healthy, doctors recommend that everyone should take part in some form of exercise every week. This is even more important for people with haemophilia, as exercise strengthens the muscles and helps protect the joints from a bleed. Exercise can also help to reduce the damage to joints when bleeds have occurred. A joint is formed where the ends of two bones meet. For example, the thigh bone and the lower leg bones meet to form the knee joint. In a healthy knee joint, the ends of the bones are coated in smooth, slippery tissue called articular cartilage. The cartilage covers and cushions the bones, acting as a shock absorber, allowing the joint to move smoothly and easily. As the joint moves, the cartilage is squashed, then bounces back when the joint stops moving. The joint is also surrounded by synovium, a tough membrane or capsule which produces a liquid called synovial fluid that lubricates and helps to reduce wear and tear on the joint. Tendon and muscles attached to the bones power the joint, making it able to move. All these parts of the joint work together to make sure the joint is held together when it moves. As we've heard, when someone has haemophilia, they can bleed not only from cuts, but also from a muscle or into a joint. This can happen if they hurt themselves, but often it happens on its own, without any kind of injury for those with severe haemophilia. People with haemophilia may bleed into any joint, but the elbows, knees and ankles are most often affected. If bleeding happens repeatedly into a single joint, called a target joint, it can cause serious damage to the joint. One of the reasons why joint bleeding is so common in people with haemophilia is the large number of blood vessels in the synovium. A bleed can result from the joint pinching the synovial membrane during movement, which breaks the blood vessels within it. The bleeding is initially confined to the synovium and then extends into the fluid within the joint space. Bleeding into joints is much more serious than bleeding from a cut, as it's often difficult to tell that a bleed has started. In the early stages of a bleed, there may not be any outward signs that it's taking place, but the person may feel a bubbling or tingling feeling. As the bleed progresses, the joint may begin to feel warm, and the joint movement becomes more restricted. As the bleed continues, more blood enters the joint space and the synovial membrane begins to stretch, causing the joint to swell. With such an advanced bleed, the stretching of the synovial membrane makes the joint feel hot, swollen and very painful. Finally, the amount of blood in the joint prevents it moving at all, and it becomes fixed in an unusual position. Giving an injection of factor will stop any more bleeding into the joint within minutes by telling the blood to start clotting. Although injection of factor stops the bleeding, it doesn't remove the blood that has already collected. Instead, it's thought that the blood is gradually broken down by enzymes released by the synovium, 
and is slowly reabsorbed by the synovial membrane over time. If factor is given early, the bleeding will stop quickly and the joint will feel better within a day or two. However, if factor is given later, when more blood has collected, it will take several days for the blood to go and for the joint to start working normally again. Once the blood has been removed, there may be few noticeable signs in the short term that it's occurred. But every time a bleed happens, it damages the joint, as the enzymes that break the blood down also cause the synovium to become inflamed and swollen. The thicker the synovium becomes, the more blood vessels it contains and the more likely it is to bleed. The activity of the enzymes also causes changes to the smooth cartilage that lines the ends of the bones. The cartilage becomes uneven and loses its elasticity. Frequent bleeds eventually lead to sections of the cartilage being worn away completely so that the space between the bones becomes narrower, allowing the bones to rub together. The contact between the bones also causes changes to the bone itself. The ends of the bones become thickened, and the edges of the bone may grow outwards. The changes that occur following frequent bleeds may eventually lead to the joint losing its normal shape and function. When this happens, the person is said to have arthritis in their knee. When someone has advanced arthritis in the knee, the joint becomes painful when moved, or even when resting, and may not be able to fully straighten. The joint damage caused by frequent bleeds is permanent, and can have a serious impact on people with haemophilia, preventing them from enjoying a normal life. They may be unable to ride a bicycle or run around with their friends. In later life, they may be unable to walk without pain or even need to use crutches or a wheelchair. The changes that happen to a joint after repeated bleeds can be seen when the joint is x-rayed. This picture shows an x-ray of somebody with a normal healthy knee joint. The ends of the thigh bone and lower leg bones can be seen clearly and the articular cartilage is shown on the x-ray as the space between the bones. People with haemophilia who have had several joint bleeds in a target joint like the knee are likely to have the early stages of joint damage or arthritis. When an x-ray is taken, loss of the articular cartilage can begin to be seen as a narrowing of the joint space. As this cartilage cushions the bones when they move, the knee will feel stiff and its movement will be limited. As the damage to the joint progresses following further bleeds, changes are more noticeable on an x-ray. There may be no obvious joint space at one side or across the whole joint where the cartilage has worn away completely and changes to the ends of the bone can be seen. In the most advanced stages, the joint may even collapse completely. We've seen that joint bleeds can seriously damage the joint in the long term and may stop someone with haemophilia enjoying an active life when they're older. Prophylaxis can help prevent bleeds happening so that damage to joints is less likely to occur. However, for all people with haemophilia, whether they're on prophylaxis or not, it is important to recognise the signs that a bleed has started so that they can be treated as early as possible. An early onset bleed can be identified by tingling, bubbling, warmth and pain progressing to a limited range of joint movement. Injection of a normal dose of the replacement factor at this stage will reduce the associated pain and lower the risk of damage to the joint. Symptoms of severe pain, heat, swelling and an unusual position of the joint only occur after the blood has filled the joint space and indicate the advanced stages of a joint bleed. An advanced bleed requires injection of a major dose of factor to avoid further damage to the joint. The best way to keep joints flexible and strong is to never have a joint bleed. Prophylaxis, combined with regular exercise, can make this possible, making sure that people with haemophilia can lead a normal, active life.